Well, despite the economic benefits the energy industry is producing around the nation, there are those who are voicing concern over the use of something called fracking, which is when high pressure water is injected deep underground to shatter the shell rock that holds the natural gas. Now, while the practice has completely revolutionized the natural gas industry, a series of small earthquakes in areas where fracking has been used does have some questioning whether the two are related. Now, I had the chance to sit down with Chesapeake's Aubrey McClendon to visit about how we should balance the energy industry's environmental impact with its economic benefits. Is it going to take another energy crisis for us to literally get off our doves here in America and find a sensible energy policy. In some ways, I think we're in an energy crisis already. We already export a billion dollars a day of our national wealth to places around the world, some of which leaks out to terrorist organizations, and we have to go spend more uh, money to, to fight that terror. So in a way, we're in a kind of a rolling crisis. It's not characterized as that, because for most people, $2.50 gasoline is, is affordable. But if you get to a point where gasoline prices go to $3.54, $4.55, I think we have serious problems again, and we will have missed a real opportunity to embrace cheaper uh, American domestic uh, natural gas rather than imported oil. Past several years have certainly been interesting for the industry from a technological standpoint, but also from some of the ups and downs. Uh, has technology is technology a double-edged sword? Well, I mean, I think the uh, the, the downside of technology is that. Um, we deplete more quickly the resources that we find, but from a capital return perspective, that's better. And we found so much new natural gas that actually we think it is a good idea to get it out of the ground as fast as possible. It's difficult to see, though, that, um, that any negatives with technology um, would ever come close to matching the huge positives of natural gas, which is just in the last few years we found more clean burning natural gas in America than all the oil that there is in Saudi Arabia. And ours is much, is much uh, cheaper as well. When we talk about challenges, what do you see as the biggest challenge, either government regulation or public perception? Oh, they're probably related a little bit um, in the sense that politicians feed off public perceptions. But right now, we're, we're not a well-understood industry. We're, we're doing a better job of telling that story. There's a natural gas marketing campaign out there today to, to bring home to people uh, the, the, uh, all the great things that this fuel um, does. And when, when we think we achieve that, we also will be educating politicians as well. But it's... You know, we don't we don't brand our product the way that other people do, so it's always been difficult to to associate a brand name with natural gas. And, but we're making progress there. As an Oklahoma, what do people need to understand about this industry? Oh, that it's it's absolutely been the foundation of why our state has not endured the ravages of the recession the way that other states have. And not only did we not go down as far, we're going to bounce back more quickly. And we're going to take this state to a different level um, in the years ahead. It's a very exciting cleaner, brighter energy future for America and brought to you by Oklahomans. Thank you, Mr. McClendon. Okay, Rob, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Now we have much, much more on Oklahoma's energy industry on our website. There, you'll be able to hear from T. Boone Pickens on his plan to convert our nation's big rigs to CNG. We visit a new one-of-a-kind classroom teaching a new generation of CNG mechanics. Plus, one of my favorites, the interesting idea of turning our nation's struggling post offices into CNG filling stations. Now, to see any of these, just head to our website at okhorizon.com and click on this week's value added.